Love Hanoi Old Quarter. Like jogging around Hoan Kim Lake. Greta Logan returns to Vietnam not long ago with a new role, Norwegian ambassador to Vietnam. First time came to Hanoi in the 1990s, Ambassador Greta Logan still keeps the memories of the old days of an ancient and peaceful Hanoi with typical shops and dishes. Preparing for the incoming four-year term, Ambassador Greta Logan has set many priorities to bring Vietnam-Norway relations to a new height. Hello and welcome back to Sharing Vietnam. As a new ambassador to Vietnam, top priorities of Ambassador Greta Logan would be a sustainable blue economy, cooperation between the two countries in bilateral, regional and multilateral issues. And today we'll have a talk with her about her agenda to strengthen the bilateral relation with Vietnam. Thank you so much for joining our show today. Xin chào. I'm really honored to be on this program, so thank you. And what did you choose Vietnam as your next posting? I visited Vietnam first time in the beginning of the 90s. Then I was several times in, in both Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City uh, a couple of years. And I was so impressed by the Vietnamese people and the friendliness and uh, energy in the country. And uh, so I have been always wanted to come back to Vietnam and serving here. Vietnam as a very uh, peaceful country and uh, stable country. It was very tempting for me when Hanoi, Vietnam came up as uh, available for me. I applied and I'm so happy that I got my first choice. Then in your daily life, what did you do to get to know more about Vietnam's people, Vietnam's culture? First of all, I have a very good staff here at the embassy. So they are extremely professional and, you know, very helpful in introducing me to the Vietnamese culture and traditions. So that is number one. Uh, number two, you know, I like uh, jogging. So every weekend I jog around Huang Kim Lake and there I meet people. And I love doing this and talk to people and uh, just experiencing walking in, in Hanoi, the old, uh, the old quarter. I do it every, every weekend. I walk to the office from the residence to the embassy every morning and going back and just watching the street life and uh, talking to people, I really enjoy it. And I think this is the best way actually of getting to know a new country. It's it's actually by interacting with people. And now are you excited about your first uh, TET holiday in Vietnam? Did I understand this will be my first TET in, in Vietnam and I understand this is the really the, the family holiday for the Vietnamese people, like Christmas is the family holiday um, for Norwegians. So I will stay here in, in Hanoi and uh, I, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to see how it is. And, uh, and I see a lot of people, they buy these uh, trees, yeah. the Tet tree, yeah. and we will do it here at the embassy also. And, and you have special food, yeah, lots of flowers, and you have special dishes. So I'm really looking forward to taste the special Tet dishes. Yeah. So I'm very excited. And now in the world, there's a lot of talks and discussion about green economy and blue economy. So why is the blue concept is so crucial to Norway? Like Vietnam, Norway is a maritime nation and a coastal nation. And you know, our economy is based on the ocean and the resources from the ocean, whether it's oil, ga gas, fisheries, and we are completely dependent on a sustainable ocean economy, what we call the blue economy. And that's why uh, my prime minister last year took the initiative on a global level to, uh, to work for a sustainable blue economy. Mm -hmm. And I think this will also fit very 
well with our priorities here in Vietnam, as Vietnam is also a coastal uh, nation and a maritime nation. So we have a lot of common interest when it comes to a sustainable ocean economy. And we are both very much concerned about uh, plastic littering, littering in the ocean. You know, it will also affect our economies, both in Vietnam, in Norway, and at a global level. So this is a sort of a global issue. And as you said, Vietnam and Norway has a lot in common. So which sector of Vietnam are the most attractive to Norwegian investors besides the traditional areas such as fishery or aquaculture? I would like to, uh, I, I think where we do ha see a lot of potential and actually interest from Norwegian companies is uh, within renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially the solar, but also the wind. And we have had several Norwegian companies here visiting uh, Vietnam to s look into the possibility of, of uh, setting up solar plants. And this is, I mean, this is not just for uh, Vietnam, but on a global level, we need to, uh, to change the energy mix from coal to more cleaner energy. This is a challenge. In, uh, for the whole world, not just for Vietnam. And I think this is an area where Norway, see, we have a lot of uh, expertise and we have high tech um, companies willing to come here and to, to invest. Uh, we have a lot of experience in aquaculture, which is also a great interest for Vietnam. And uh, recently we are also looking into cooperation. We have had several Norwegian companies involved in what we call the marine rest raw material. Uh, this is a new concept. It means that instead of, we, are, we need to use the whole fish, you know, not just the sort of the, the filet, but we are also going to use the, the, the head, the bones, uh, this, uh, the shells, everything which can be processed and be used for animal uh, fodder, also for human cons uh, consumption, cosmetics, you name it. With the advantage and potential of countries with strong marine economies, Vietnam and Norway could step up cooperation towards a sustainable, environmental-friendly blue economy. The blue economy is also a Norway's initiative to call on the international community to exploit and conserve the marine environment globally. She is also very dedicated in uh, promoting Norway. Uh, as a destination for both tourists from Vietnam and, uh, and also uh, the, the in industry and the business we have towards Vietnam. Since both Norway and Vietnam are coastal nations, we have a quite a lot of common, as you know, for instance in the fishery sector, but also in the aquaculture sector. Uh, and um, she is uh, now very focused on, uh, uh, on the blue ocean. With collaboration in traditional fields such as fisheries and environment, both Norway and Vietnam are among the largest seafood exporters in the world. Norway currently has 40 investment projects in Vietnam, with a total registered capital of more than 160 million US dollars. Trade turnover between the two countries has grown significantly in the past decade, but still not commensurate with the potential. Therefore, this will be one of the top priorities of Ambassador Rector Loken. And uh, we see here that, um, especially within aquaculture now, Vietnam is uh, developing their aquaculture industry uh, quite quickly now. And they are very eager to have more collaboration with Norway. So m one of my goals this year is to establish um, more formal collaboration in the whole value chain from technology transfer to equipment and services. The relationship between the two countries has many potentials and strengths that have not yet been exploited. 
so it is necessary to promote cooperation in all areas, especially in the fields that both sides have strengths and needs such as oil and gas, shipbuilding, sea transport, culture, education and tourism. Vietnam's discussion of a free trade agreement with the European Free Trade Area EFTA, which enclosed Norway, will be an important step to strengthen bilateral trade activities in the coming time. And talking about trade, do you think that the trade turnover between the two countries now is at our potential and um, how can it be increased? I think there are much more to achieve in terms of trade. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my ambitions during my four years here. We need to improve both ways. And that's why for us it's very important there has been negotiations between uh, EFTA, which includes uh, Norway, Switzerland, Iceland and Liechtenstein. Mm -hmm. And there has been free trade negotiations between EFTA countries and Vietnam for many, many years. And I think when we do finalize uh, this free trade agreement, I hope in the near future uh, that will definitely benefit the trades between our countries. And in addition to trade, what are your other priorities to uh, strengthen the bilateral relation between Vietnam and Norway? I would like to mention as a female ambassador, I'm very, you know, for me, all issues re regarding women's rights, gender equality, it will be high on my priority during these four years. Mm -hmm. We also see there is cooperation between, uh, between Norway and Vietnam in between certain universities. So there is an ongoing cooperation. Every day I meet uh, Vietnamese who tell me, oh, they have been studying in Norway. So <laughs> I'm very impressed. And this is something, you know, this people-to-people -people, uh, contact is also very, very important in, in uh, and telling a lot about uh, the long ties between Norway and Vietnam. You know, Vietnam, is an important uh, partner for Norway and Vietnam as an ASEAN country is also very very important. And besides bilateral, do you think that a multilateral mechanism also offers a lot of opportunities for Vietnam and Norway to cooperate with each other? For Norway, a key foreign policy priority is you know, uh, a rule-based international order and an effective United Nation. And this is the best protection for smaller nations. Norway, we just have five million. And when it comes to peace and security on the global level, whether it comes to uh, trade, uh, it's, it's very important. And uh, I do see we have a lot of common interest and as Vietnam now seeking a seat in the Security Council in 2020 to 21, Norway is also seeking a seat in the Security Council, but one year after uh, Vietnam. And it's very interesting because I want to show you, I have been studying, these are the Norwegian priorities for mm -hmm. our candidacy and these are yeah. the Vietnamese. And they really, it's very interesting to me that they both, we do have a lot of common interest in terms of uh, the importance of multilateralism, mm -hmm. an effective United Nation, uh, uh, women, peace and security is high on our uh, priorities. Also a sustainable development goals and, and an inclusive growth. Ambassador, again, thank for your time with us. Xin cảm ơn. Chúc mừng năm mới. And that's all for sharing Vietnam today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.